So now we're going to start talking about electrons and how electrons are going to work. So remember, electrons are going to be floating around on the outside or in orbital around the nucleus, okay? Now, if you remember, we talked about the atomic number in the previous video. And the atomic number tells you the number of protons, and it also tells you the number of electrons. So, if you remember a little further back, protons are positive, electrons are negative. So, if something like carbon, we were saying, has six protons and six electrons, that means it has six pluses, six protons or pluses, and six electrons, because the electron and the electrons would be negative, right? So six pluses and six minuses gives you an overall charge of zero, right? So that's what I mean with the sentence here where I say um, atoms were the same number of protons as electrons are electrically neutral and have a charge of zero. Now, when you remove or add an electron, all of a sudden you're going to have what's called an ion because you're messing with the number of protons versus the number of electrons. So now you've got more pluses and minuses or more minuses than pluses. So the process of gaining or losing an electron is called ionization, and that's going to create an ion, and an ion is something that has either more protons than electrons or less protons than electrons, and it has a charge, okay? So um, there's basically two ways it can go. You can either have um, a positive charge overall or a negative charge. So I'm going to see if I can get this thing to work. Okay, so if we're talking um, about... Uh, let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah, okay, cool. Erase that. Okay, um, so if we're going to be talking about having, how do I get that? Okay, having, um, let's see, let's talk about helium, right? So helium has two protons. It also has two electrons. And it has two neutrons, which are going to have a charge of zero, right? So the protons are plus, the electrons are negative, and the neutrons are zero. So if we look at the overall charge of this, we have two pluses, plus two minuses, plus two zeros, our overall charge is going to be zero. Now let's say that we have the same setup, so we have two protons and we have two neutrons. Oops, yeah, that's fine. Um, and let's say that we gain an electron, right? So now we have three electrons. An E with the negative sign is um, shorthand for an electron. So now let's put our charges here, right? So we've got two pluses, three minuses, two zeros. And actually, I wouldn't even worry about the neutrons at this point because they're just going to take up space and confuse you. Okay, so we have two pluses, three minuses. Our overall charge is minus one. So this is going to be an atom that has a negative charge or a charge of minus one, right? Okay, let me erase this really quick and then we can talk about the next type of um, situation. Okay, in the next one, let's say that we have um, two protons and this time we are going to lose an electron, so we're going to have one electron. So we have two pluses, one minus. When we do this, the overall charge is going to be positive one. That's still a charge, right? So if we go back to the notes here, I can click back over here, you can see that there are two names for the types of ions. You've got a cation and an anion. A cation is going to have a positive charge, and an anion is going to have a negative charge. So if we go back to my little doodler here, what would we call the one that you see right here? So we're saying that it has a charge of positive one, so it has an overall positive charge. This would be something that we would call a cation, okay? The way that I remember cation is if you look right here, it has a plus sign in the middle of its name, and it's going to be atoms that have a positive charge. If we have that other situation where we had two protons that have a positive charge, and we had three electrons that have a negative charge, that gave us a charge of minus one, we would call that an anion. And the way that I remember that is a little bit not as cool, but it has an N in it for negative, right? The only problem is they both end with N, so I wouldn't go too crazy with that one. Okay, so that's going to be how you can tell the difference between a cation and an anion. All right, now we're also going to have what are called um, energy levels. And what's going to happen is Atoms are going to set up in a certain way. Let's see if I can get this to come back up. Okay, let me erase this. This is just like we're in the classroom and I'm erasing the board. Okay, 
So um, let's talk about energy levels and how that works. So with electrons, what's going to happen is we have our nucleus in the center. And remember, the electrons are going to be cruising around the outside. The first orbital, or the first area where the electrons can be zooming around like this, can hold a maximum of two electrons. The next one can hold a maximum of eight, and the next one can hold a maximum of eight. And that's about as far as we need to worry for, for now, okay? Now, if we were to look at our periodic table, see if I can get that to come up again. Okay, um, let's look at, let me move this over here. Let's look at lithium right here, okay? So lithium has how many, let's just, uh, woo, I lost my little thing. Where'd it go? Oh boy, Fleur, I tell ya. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this again, and there it is. Okay, so let's talk about lithium. And so I'm going to draw um, Li for lithium right here, okay? So how many protons, or um, sorry, electrons does lithium have? If we look over here, you can see it has three. So if we are going to draw its electron configuration, it would have two in this innermost shell, and then it would have that third one in the next shell. Now why? Well, let's think about it. This innermost shell can hold a maximum of two electrons, so that third one has to go into this next shell, okay? So we call the um, electrons that are in that outermost shell, we call those valence electrons, okay? Um, let's look at beryllium right next door. So I'll do, oops, where am I? B E, and we've got four electrons this time. So we're gonna have two, and then two again, right? All right, um, let's look at another one. Let's do sodium. Okay, so we have Na, and sodium has 11 electrons because I'm looking at its atomic number. So the way that would work is we would have two, then we would have eight, and then we would have one, right? And so, what I want you to notice about this stuff is there's a couple of ways that the periodic table has been arranged. So, if you look, you can see that sodium and lithium both have one electron in their outermost shell. And if you look, sodium and lithium are actually in the same column. That same column you wrote that Roman numeral one above. And that Roman numeral one and everyone in this column has got the setup where they have one electron in their outermost shell. So if you look at beryllium, that's got a Roman numeral two, and if we look at beryllium, it has two electrons in its outermost shell. Oh my God, hopefully you see a pattern forming. Okay, now the other thing I want you to notice is you wrote these numbers along the side here, right? And so lithium had a number two on the side over here. And if we look, how many orbitals, which are these circles I drew around, does lithium have? Lithium has one, two, and there's number two, beryllium had one, two, and there's that number two, right? If we look at sodium, sodium has a number three next to it for that row, and if we look, one, two, three, okay? So this whole periodic table thing was not an accident. They arranged it this way, and that'll help you to kind of make shortcuts here and there, like on a test if you're like, oh, how many valence electrons does sodium have? You can even look at your periodic table and kind of use a shortcut like that. Now, when I say valence electrons, I'm talking about how many electrons are in their outermost shell. And the reason that's important is because that's going to determine how they're going to react with other substances. Some of them are going to be wimps, give their electrons away. Some of them are going to be total jerk bullies, and they're going to take electrons. And then you're going to have the nice ones that went to kindergarten, and they're like, oh, let's share. Everything's cool. But even the ones that share are like, yeah, let's share, but not really. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, too. Okay, so um, that's going to be valence electrons. So... Um, yeah, that's basically it for those. Let's go on to behavior. Um, we've already talked about ionization and how that works. And these two words here are going to be really important. Um, oxidation and reduction. So oxidation is going to be what we call an atom when it, or the process, when it loses an electron. And I say it increases in charge, and I'll show you why in a second. And then we have the word reduction, which is gaining an electron. 
Okay, so if I go back to my little doodler, um, we can talk about what that means. All right, let me do some erasing here so we can see what Fleur is talking about. Okay, so um, when we, ooh, I need my pen. Okay, so um, let's say that we have something with two protons and it has two electrons, right? And let's say that it goes through a process where, oops, and we said that's plus, right? And that's minus. Um, let's say that it has lost an electron, so now it has only one electron, so it's going to have what kind of charge? Positive charge, okay? So this has lost an electron, right? So that process is going to be what we call oxidation. Now, if you notice in your notes, I actually wrote Leo and Ger after this, and that actually was not me being weird. That actually has a purpose. Because Leo stands for lost electron oxidation. L-E-O. Lost electron oxidation. Okay, that's a way that you can remember it. Now, um, woo, reduction is going to be the opposite direction. Okay, so a reduction, I wrote GER, right? And that stands for gain electron. Elec. Why isn't that working? There we go. Electron reduction. And so that means it's gained an electron and it's actually reduced its charge. What I mean by that is if you're gaining an electron, you're gaining more negatives. And so the more negative you go, the more you're reducing your overall charge. So that's why it's called a reduction. And that confuses people a lot because it's like, wait a minute, you're gaining something. How are you reducing then, right? So it's kind of the opposite how we tend to think of things. So the way that I like to do it is by using that little way of remembering it. So I say, oh, where did it go? There it is. So I say, Leo the lion says grr. And everybody makes fun of me, but I will tell you that you will have no problem remembering that when we start talking about um, things like quizzes and tests. Okay, so on the next one, we're going to talk a little bit more about how atoms work.